Hi gang, Dave Spaulding from Handgun Combatives, and what I want to share with you today is a new drill that I'm incorporating into my new class for this calendar year, Enhanced Combative Pistol, and I call it the Handgun Combatives Box Drill. Now you're thinking, Dave, there's already a box drill, why are you using that name? Well, quite, quite frankly, I want to give attribution to those people who created the drill and have used it over the years. A lot of people have laid claim to the drill, but I'm going to lay it right on the, the doorstep of Ken Hackathorn. Ken first showed me this drill, I would say, in the early 1990s. It was a long time ago. And as he explained the drill to me, sounded to me like original thought, not something he picked up from somebody else. And Ken is one of those kind of guys who has that mind that allows him to develop drills to emphasize certain skills where uh, the vast majority of people just steal everybody else's shit. That's not the case here. Now, understand something about the original box drill. It was never intended to be a tactic. It was a drill designed to emphasize a specific skill. And what we're talking about is essentially separating your feet from your hands, which is you shoot from the waist up and you move from the waist down. It was never intended to be how you should move in a gunfight. But you know what? That's what it became. It kind of reminds me of position Sewell. You know, Sewell was developed for a very specific circumstance, but because it was new and notable, everybody took off with it and started using it for things that was never intended to be used for. Same thing with the box drill. Because it was kind of unique, people started incorporating it and started letting people think that this is how they were going to move in a gunfight, and nothing could be further from the truth. The way I was originally taught to do the box drill, if you come on down here, was that you started shooting on the move going down, and that's fine. It would look something like this. You would draw, you would shoot on the move going forward. And quite frankly, going forward is the only shooting on the move technique that allows you to move the speed you need in a gunfight and still be accurate. Once you start moving sideways and backwards, it kind of goes sideways. And what you would do then would be something that would look like this. If you had a really high speed instructor or somebody thought he was really doing something unique, it may look something like this. When you got to the side of your box, you then were taught to kind of sashay backwards. And then when you got to the back side of the box, you did the same thing, either something like this or something that looked like this. And again, for its intended purpose, it was great to teach you to move with your feet, to shoot with your upper body. But really, let me ask you this. Give it some critical thought. Do you think if rounds were coming your direction and you were trying to save your own life, this would be good? Or better yet, move it back. Because history has shown us that you can move back about two or three steps before you run the risk of falling back on your ass. And if you fall back on your ass in a gunfight and you take a round through your rectum long ways, it's a non-survivable wound. Don't believe me, go talk to a medical professional. Keep in mind, most gunshot wounds go across the body. Very seldom do they go up the rectum and go long ways. You do that, you're probably dead. So falling down in the middle of a gunfight is not a good thing. And again, if you don't believe me, go on Live Leak, go on YouTube. You'll see all kinds of cruiser videos where police officers will be on flat pavement, nothing there. A couple of steps, they're falling down. So the idea that you're going to sashay backwards for 10, 15, 20 yards doesn't make sense. And it's not going to work in real life. So what I've tried to do in my version of the box drill is make it a little bit more tactical, the type of movement that actually may be utilized in a gunfight. Now, keep in mind the way I view movement and conflict is that movement has to be done with purpose. I've heard lots of instructors that say, in a gunfight, move, move, move. Where, what, are you, 
are you just moving? What are you doing? Just screaming move doesn't do anything. Movement has to be with purpose. And after decades of studying uh, armed conflict, primarily pistol fights, I've broken it down into three categories. And they're not absolutes, but they cover a lot of it. And the first one is that you move until you're prepared to give cover by outbound fire. And what I mean by that is you're moving until you're prepared to plant and shoot with enough accuracy that it's going to incapacitate your opponent. If you're not prepared to shoot accurately, you should still be moving. Well, what about the idea of shooting while you're moving? Well, in order to get that type of accuracy, you're probably going to be moving pretty slow. And again, don't believe me, just look at some of the championship shooters during these competitions and see how slow they go in order to hit the targets. So I'm either going to be moving quickly or I'm going to be shooting accurately, but I'm not going to be doing both. The second would be to move to a position of advantage, maybe cover or concealment, someplace you can't be seen. And then the last one would be to remove yourself completely from the battle space, what we used to call in the age of officer survival, exiting the kill zone. So if you're not doing one of those three things, then why are you moving? Because just dancing around is not going to keep you from getting shot. Your movement has to be aggressive. It has to be enough to set up the shot or to, to reach an objective. So that's what we're gonna to try to do here. And let me explain to you what we're gonna do in the handgun combatives box drill. The drill starts at 15 yards and it moves to eight. Now the reason we move to eight is because we're gonna be shooting on steel targets. It could be seven or it could be five. We use eight for safety purposes. Now you're gonna ask me why I'm using steel targets. Well, part of the drill is I want target recognition. I want you to see the target going down. In my classes where I may have eight, 10, 12, 15 people, and I'm trying to keep the class moving, knock over steel plates is an easy economical way to do that, but it's not the best way. If it's just you and a buddy and you're practicing, I would use one of those cardboard targets, like from Action Target, that has a balloon in it. So when you hit it, it falls down. An economical way to do that is just get a common coat hanger, blow up a balloon and wedge it underneath the hook, put a t-shirt over it, tie a string to the balloon's nipple and suspend it. When you hit the balloon, the t-shirt and the hanger are gonna fall and that's a great humanoid looking target that will allow you to recognize the target as incapacitated move to the next firing point. For our purposes though, in my classes, we use knockdown steel plates. So we're gonna start at 15, and on the buzzer of an electronic timer, we're gonna be shooting on the move. So it's gonna look. When I get to this cone, I'm gonna automatically transition laterally. The type of explosive movement that will help me maybe save my life. So I'm gonna move and I'm gonna play it. I'm going to shoot. The target that goes over then tells me that it's time to move on. Now planting and shooting, there's a technique behind that, but I'm not going to tell you on this video. If you want to learn how to do that, then sign up for my class, you cheapskate. But after I knock down that target, I'm going to move on and take the plant. I'm going to shoot. Now I'm going to have to move to the rear. Am I going to sashay backwards? No, I'm not. I'm going to tuck my pistol in and I'm going to move. I'm going to stop, I'm going to plant, I'm going to shoot the other one, and then I'm going to move laterally again, over. Get the next one, pull it in, move, get my last target, boom. The goal is to get it all done in 20 seconds or less. Now, 20 seconds may be kind of fast, it may be kind of slow depending on your age, we came up with 20 seconds after having a wide range of shooters shoot it. A drill should not be laid out as such that you have to be a fit 25 year old in order to accomplish it. You know, some of the older students out there, if they don't feel like they can do it, then they're just gonna poo poo it off and they're not even gonna try. And the drill may be a benefit to them. So you wanna make it attainable but not impossible. By the same token, you don't want it to be so attainable that you do it on your first try. But keep in mind that it's not about mastering this drill. It's about mastering the skills that make the drill a success. The shooting on the move rapidly. 
Hey, attack that target. Don't just lackadaisical walk down there. Attack the target. Aggressive lateral movement. Stop. Get accurate shots. What's the best way to incapacitate someone? A good, well-placed shot on the first round. I realize that may not happen. You may have to follow through. Well, that's what the fall down targets represent. If you run out of ammo, you got to reload on the move. You can't just stand still and do it. If you've got to do a tap rack to clear something out, well, you know what? You better do that while you're moving. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on here that uh, we're trying to put into a drill that you can do uh, most any range and also emphasize some combative pistol craft skills. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my old body down here. I'm going to set the drill up and I'm going to shoot it. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, I'm going to be shooting this with my Templar Custom Arms Handgun Combatives Glock 19. If you carry a 7, 8, 9 shot gun, then don't look at it as unfair. It's not a competition. It's okay to carry those guns, but you need to be able to reload them on the move or in the middle of conflict. That's just your real world of work, so prepare for that. So, Darren, can you run the camera and the uh, and the timer? You got it. Let's see if we can give this a run, see if we can get a successful one. Are you ready? I think so. How do we do? Pretty good, 1971. I'll take that for a 60 year old man. So anyway, as you can see, a lot going on there. A lot of movement, stopping, starting. Um, I think it's a, a valid drill. People have shot it so far, have had a good time with it. So, uh, you know, get yourself some reactive type targets, whatever you can come up with and give it a run. Thanks for checking in.